Hey, I just wanted to answer a question that I got on the Discord, which was what's the difference between bump and displacement? As far as I could tell, they're the exact same thing. So I'm going to show you how they're not actually the same thing, as well as show you every feature related to bump and displacement. Now I'll be showing this in Blender, but these principles apply regardless of the engine that you're using. I'm also gonna show a feature called adaptive subdivision. Depending on the engine, it might be called adaptive tessellation or just tessellation. So keep that in mind, but the principles should apply regardless. So to start off, let's show the bump map. So we have some, um, we have an actual displacement map here, which is just an image and then I'm feeding it through a bump map. So we're going from color to height and normal to normal. And what you can see immediately is we start to get the illusion of bumpiness. If we mute and unmute that, you can see the difference that it's making on our surface. And I say the illusion because it's not actually breaking up the silhouette of the object or the actual surface of the object. It's just appearing that there is some surface breakup happening, but it's kind of a cool trick and this should be your go-to um, as a first approach for your objects. If bump is not enough, then you can turn to something like displacement, but bump is less compute heavy and should be your go-to. As far as settings, we have distance and strength. Distance should be the first thing you try to reduce the actual intensity of the bump, and then strength should be kind of your fine tuning. The reason you do that in order is because when you decrease the distance, it's not getting rid of as much of the information. I'm not gonna get into the, to the technicals. You can read up on some papers if you want, but just as a general rule of thumb, decrease the distance first and then fine tune with the strength. Cool, so let's get rid of our bump node and let's move on to displacement, which is plugged in a little bit differently. You go from displacement to the displacement in the actual material output, and then you go from color to height. And right away you could see that nothing much has changed. And that's because Blender by default is trying to save your computer from crashing and getting yourself into trouble. Because like I said, displacement is a very intense setting for the computer, or rather it can be, so you just need to know what you're doing. Um, enable, in order to enable displacement, we just go to our material output and then scroll down to the surface settings. We have this feature called displacement. And right now it's set to bump only. So this is as if we only had a bump map. We could change that to displacement only and you can see immediately things look pretty different or we could change it to bump and displacement to get kind of the best of both worlds. So right now um, this is set to a pretty high scale. So if we decrease that maybe by half, we can see a little bit better what's going on and I'm gonna decrease that again to like 0.1. So this would be a more appropriate for our wood chip pile. Although we're still not getting um, super detailed displacement when we scroll in, this looks pretty good maybe from this distance, but I wanna have more fine detail as I scroll in. So I have two options. Number one is I could just continue to subdivide this sphere, but it's already subdivided to a level of four. So that's not really great on our computing. What we could do is we can use a feature called adaptive subdivision. What that means is it will adaptively subdivide depending on how close you're viewing the object at, or in the case of an animation, how close our camera is. So right now, um, it's just set to normal subdivision. To turn on adaptive subdivision, we need to go to our render settings. And then under the feature set, we change it from supported to experimental. And again, this is just Blender trying to keep you away from the settings unless you know what you're doing with them because they can be really taxing on the computer. So now if we go back to our subdivision settings, we get this new toggle called adaptive subdivision. So if we enable that, that will start to adaptively subdivide based on how close we're viewing the object. We do have a levels in the viewport, and this is to um, reduce the chance of your computer crashing while you're viewing things close up. Just keep that in mind. So usually I have the levels in the viewport set pretty low, just because I don't really need to subdivide it in the viewport. I'm really just looking for subdivision at the actual rendering. So one more setting, the dicing scale. If you have this set to a low number like it is right now, then it's gonna cut up the mesh um, more times. It's gonna dice it more frequently. So we wanna set that to a high number if we're running into memory problems. Maybe we get an error when we go to render where it says our GPU is out of memory. Then we might set, try setting it to something like five, 
10 or even higher. But I'm gonna keep it at one just for our rendering. And then let's go ahead and render and I can show you the difference between bump and displacement. Okay, so this is just about done. It did take a minute because I left my samples at 4,000. But now as you zoom in, you can see that this is actually breaking up the geometry um, with each wood chip kind of getting its own displacement, which is really cool. And this is exactly what we're looking for. In this case, we could get really close to this rendering and it would look real and we'd have really great results. So this right here, I'll set to render channel number one, and then let's go to render, render channel number two, just by hitting two on our keypad. And then let's actually look at bump and then we'll compare the two. So I'm setting up my bump map again. Let me make sure that my settings are good. And then let's go ahead and render that as well. Okay, so you could see here very clearly as I toggle between the two settings, the difference between bump and displacement. So there are a few additional settings that you need to set up to get this working, but that's how you set it up in Blender. And I hope that's been um, very instructional for you and hopefully you've learned a thing or two. So keep the questions coming. I love to answer them. Uh, I am headed out on vacation this week, so I may not be as active as I usually am. But yeah, there you go. Thanks.